Hey there, this is Akshatana and welcome back to a new video. And in this video, we are going to cover how you can create AI applications. Yes, after the chat GPT has come, after these LLMs, the large language models have come, they have also become a way of uh, making AI applications because these companies like OpenAI and Google Gemini, they have provided so great, such a great APIs and uh, their pricing is so flexible that most of the companies have also shifted uh, their AI requirements uh, or they have also outsourced their AI requirements to these LLM companies, right? Because pricing is low and they are quite easier to use. You just need to hit an API call and get the results. But as a software engineer, as a software developer, as a learner, as a student, you should know that uh, using OpenAI APIs or using ChatGPT APIs is not the only way of making AI applications. There are other ways also. And in this video, I'm going to give you six ways by which you can create AI applications. One way is definitely ChatGPT and LLMs, which is, which is going to come in this list. But without wasting more time, let me give you the first way of how you can actually create a AI application that is using edge computing, right? So what is edge computing? Edge computing is basically a, a mechanism or an architecture in which your computation is happening on the edge device. What is an edge device? Let's say a mobile application, right? A smartwatch, a washing machine, a Google Alexa device, a television. These are all the edge devices, the devices which are there going to be, which are going to be at the edge with the end user, right? Uh, and when the computation, the AI machine learning computation happens on these devices itself, it's called edge computing, right? The Amazon Alexa has a machine learning model inside it, the device, right? That's why it is able to give you the results so quickly. Let's say a washing machine is there, which is given a power itself. It doesn't have to communicate with the internet, right? It has given a power itself such that it is able to predict whether the clothes are now dry or not, right? The smart fridge, the smart refrigerator has a power itself to see what is the temperature inside and if the content inside is uh, like milk or vegetables, what should be the uh, optimum temperature for that uh, container, the fridge container, right? There the computation is happening on the devices itself. That's why we call it as edge computing. And definitely we can also deploy machine learning models on the edge devices itself, right? But the con is these edge devices do not have that much computation memory or computation power. So you cannot deploy very high or complex machine learning models, right? Which are trained of which are trained on billions or millions of data points. You cannot put those um, complex models on these edge devices, right? You can only deploy simpler models like IoT devices or mobile devices. These are all the edge devices, right? So yes, you can deploy models on your devices. You can use TensorFlow Lite, which is a library or a package for Android, and you can use Core Machine Learning, that is Core ML for the iOS, right? No server is needed in this. Once our training is done, once your model is created into a file, you can just put this file into your application, mobile application or the smartwatch application and they are going to work without any server needed. Yes, they cannot handle machine, complex machine learning predictions and data inputs. So yes, this is the first way of how you can actually create machine learning uh, apps that just create a model, convert into a lighter version and put it on your device. Let's see the second way. Second way is the same, use LLMs like ChatGPT, Gemini, Claude, and Llama. And uh, these company, these models, are these LLMs, large language models are from various companies. Gemini is by Google, ChatGPT is by OpenAI, right? So what, how can you create it? Prompt engineering. So you have to be an expert in prompt engineering, right? It's a new domain that has come up where you give, you know, or you become an expert in giving commands to an LLM, right? Prompt engineer your bot and use it for any purpose. Let's say I want to create an application that will work as a virtual girlfriend, right? So you have to prompt engineer your uh, model and basically nowadays in the open dev day, they launch GPTs. What is GPTs? GPTs are just uh, prompt engineered models, right? Well prompt engineered model. Let's say I want to create a, a model or a bot that is a Flutter expert. So I'll just prompt engineer it, right? Hey, uh, model just work as an expert in Flutter uh, engineering or Flutter mobile app development. You should be having knowledge of block state management, provider state management, KTX, dependency injection and all. That's a model, that's a chatbot who is an expert in Flutter. So nowadays many companies are 
uh, outsourcing their AI requirements to these LLM companies, these LLMs uh, APIs, and they're just directly using it, prompt engineering them, and then using it. This is another way, right? And they're the best for running API businesses because currently uh, the cost of these APIs are very less. They're like they are, they are charging like 0 0.001 dollars per token, right? So yes, these these are the best ways of making an API business. So many companies are there. Let's say you have created a company which uh, gets like on which you have to go and just type a command, create a picture of me sitting on a bench, right? So that company is going to give you a image of you sitting on a bench, right? A, a boy sitting on a bench, right? So at the back, they are using these API companies, these large language models itself, right? Maybe DALI2 or maybe they are using uh, Claude APIs or Gemini APIs, right? So yes, these are one way. Next way is I'll talk about chatbots. If I've started chatbot, I'll talk about chatbot is the dialogue flow. Why the numbering is wrong? Yes, it is the dialogue flow. So dialogue flow is a, a module by Google or it's a library by Google or it's a package by Google or it's a uh, separate uh, startup by Google, right? Or company by Google, right? Where you can actually train your chatbots on your own data, right? You can feed in the data and then the chatbot will be trained. So this is the best way I think for creating the chatbot for organizations because organizations have lots of millions of uh, data points and they are having huge amounts of data, right? So that huge amount of data can be given to these uh, to this dialogue flow and dialogue flow is by google so dialogue flow can also connect with google gcp that is google cloud platform big data platform right so from there also you can directly upload your data to big data and from big data your di dialogue flow can consume your data and get trained so this thing you won't get it in uh, llms you cannot train your uh, chat gpt model or your gpt model on billions of data points but you can do it with dialogue flow and google using the cloud google cloud platform Right. So this is another way. Then definitely we have some uh, cloud services which you can use for uh, creating your AI mobile application. Like if I say uh, Amazon Lex is there. Amazon Lex is for building voice and chat text chatbots. Right. This is what Amazon Lex do. We have Amazon Polly, which is which can actually converts text into speeches. So that is text to audio conversion. That's what Amazon Polly does. Amazon Recognition is for deep learning. It's a deep learning based image generation service. You can use Amazon Recognition for generating images, right? The same thing that DALI does, Mid Journey does, right? You can do it using AWS also, right? So similarly, we have Amazon Transcribe, which uh, add, uh, add speech to text capability to your application with uh, automatic speech recognition, right? So Amazon Transcribe is used for audio recognition and audio generation. So yes, this is another way. Then we have a very uh, unique and interesting uh, thing that is Google Teachable, which is used for creating or building image models, sound models and pose detection models. So this is Google Teachable and you can definitely go and get started. And basically what happens here is you can actually create your own or upload your own data or you can start the camera and start building your data points, right? So if I just uh, if I just want to create an image model, I'll just click here and even I can upload my photos from Drive or even I can open the camera and start showing the images and it will start uh, creating my data set. So this is the best platform for generating your models, generating your data sets and then using it for anywhere, like use, use it anywhere. So this is basically for these three uh, projects and definitely they are bringing more models. So this is also very good, right? Then the last way is the sixth way is the most customized way, right? Create a custom models. So basically you can use uh, the mathematical libraries, the TensorFlow library, which is by Google, Keras, then PyTorch libraries to create your own models, right? Then you can deploy these models on a server and then use the APIs, right? So yes, this is the complex part, how you can uh, collect your data. So basically the companies, most of the research companies, research-based companies, the R&D companies are using this way only for creating their AI models because they don't want to outsource their data or they don't, do, they don't want to publish their data openly to any other company, right? So that's why they are using this way for creating the custom models 
they write their model using tensorflow keras and pytorch and then they uh, deploy that model on a server that server can be built any node.js express just fast api django flask anything and then they create the apis for those models and then you can use these apis in your client application whether it can be web app or it can be mobile app right so these are the six six ways which i wanted to uh, let you know uh, because many of you were asking hey how can i create an ai application these are the six ways right so let me know in the comment section which way you want me to show uh, as a project video a code tutorial video i'll try to make a video on that right but yeah for your understanding the, these six ways are the most demanding or most ongoing ways currently in the market you can use any way and create your ai application i hope you like this video till the next video keep coding keep innovating and thanks a lot